In this video, we're going to take a look at the new 3D curve element inside of Motion Builder 6, as well as path animation using the new path constraint. So to begin, let's show how you can create a 3D spline inside of Motion Builder with this new element. I'll go under uh, Templates, Elements, and of course you'll see the 3D curve. Now, don't be tempted to uh, immediately drag and drop this in your scene. If you just want to create a curve, double click on this element, and your cursor will turn into a crosshair. Once you uh, get it inside the viewport, you'll also notice that there are some instructions across the bottom of the viewer window. There's left mouse button, or LMB, to add a point after, middle mouse to add a point nearest, and right mouse to add a point before. If that's confusing, just go ahead and start placing some points with left mouse. I'll go ahead and start clicking with left, and you'll notice that after I click twice, we get a line in between. Click a third time, we get a new point, and you will see that your spline changes shape slightly as you lay down more points. This is very much like creating a Bege curve with automatic tangents on. So we're just creating a curve all the way around. If I want to add a point back to the beginning of the curve, you'll notice right now as I click with uh, left mouse, I'm adding points to the end of the curve. I can go all the way back to the beginning, and I can start clicking with right mouse, and I can increase the curve from the, uh, from the beginning end. I can also add points to the middle of a segment by clicking middle mouse. So I can I just put my mouse anywhere over a point in the curve, click with middle mouse, and I can add points to that. When I'm finished, if I'm happy with what I, uh, what I have, I can press enter to uh, accept it or escape to cancel out. So I'll go ahead and press enter, and we have a path. Now, what can we do with this path? Well, if we uh, rotate around it, you'll notice before we do anything, that this path was not created on the grid as it is in many 3D applications. The path was actually created uh, in the camera's view plane, sort of perpendicularly to the camera's uh, normal. Also, if uh, we need to change the spline, let's say we get done with it and we decided we needed f uh, more points or maybe it needed to be longer, we can right click, we can go down to path options and uh, enter add points mode which basically puts us in the same mode we were in when we were creating points from the beginning. So if I left mouse button, I can add points to the end. Right mouse, I can add points to the beginning. And middle mouse, I can add points anywhere along the spline. Again, when I'm done, I can press enter to accept, or I can hit escape and cancel out the changes that I have made. If I want to change any of the existing points, I can do so by entering vertex object mode. And you'll notice that I have access to all of my vertices. So if I grab the Move tool, I can move these around in 3D space to dramatically change the shape of my spline. I also, however, have access to the tangent handles. So I can move the tangents around and really change this curve to shape it any way that I like. So that's really all there is to it as far as the creation of a spline uh, inside of Motion Builder, the creation of a 3D curve. Let's take a look at how we can animate along these curves. I'll go ahead and switch my mode back to model. And we'll bring an object into the scene that we can animate. I'll go ahead and bring in the, the sphere that I brought in from Maya earlier in this video series. And we'll just, oh, we don't really want to scale up the spline. So let me undo that. And we'll deselect the spline itself. And all I want to scale up is the sphere. So something about like so. Now, under my constraints uh, folder, we'll drag in the new path constraint and I will lock my tab, select the sphere, and I'll X or Alt drag that into the constrained object area, and I'll select my path and drag drop that into 3D path. When I'm done, I'll click Active, and this is going to tell me that my object is going to move. Of course, that's fine. And now, when I hit Play, you'll notice my object is moving along the path. So very quick and easy. I can also still, at this point, uh, go back in, and I can re-enter vertex mode, and I can change any of the vertices around, and I can see that change my object. So you notice I can adjust even while my object is along that point of the curve, and my constrained object will update accordingly in real time. So very cool, very easy, uh, simple to use. Another excellent way that you can use path constraints, however, is in the event that you don't necessarily want to animate using F curves. You can animate the translations of an object uh, simply using uh, 3D paths from the beginning. Let me go under my constraints and make sure I clean out that uh, constraint that I made a second ago. So we'll delete that out. I'll bring in an all new sphere with no animation. Let's scale this up so that everybody at home can see it. 
And what I'm going to do is create an animation using a 3D path instead of standard keyframing uh, like, I, like you would typically do inside of Motion Builder. To do this, I'll just select my object, and under the key controls menu, I'll go under Animation and choose Create Animation Path for selected objects. It's going to warn you. It says this will create a path constraint and a path model for your selected objects, which of course is fine. Also notice I get a keyframe that appears at frame 33. We'll drag that back to frame 0. If you look in the viewer window while I do this, you'll notice that the uh, keyframe number along the path changes in real time. So now I'll jump all the way to, oh, we don't need 150 frames. We'll go, say, to frame 60. Just a real quick bouncing ball. So uh, at frame 60, I'll drag across the other side of the grid, and I'll hit the key button. And notice now my path goes straight across my scene. I can go back to frame 40, place another key, go back to frame 20, place another key. We'll go to frame 10, move my sphere up into the air, and press S. Notice my curve has updated. We'll go to frame 30, move my sphere up into the air, press S. you notice things have updated again. And 50, up into the air, key again. And we're starting to get updates all the way across. Let me go ahead and switch off trajectories for now. Now, if I want to alter this animation curve, it's very easy to do. Just like with, uh, I was doing before, we can go down to vertex mode, and all I have to do is start adjusting the tangent handles. So we'll go ahead and shrink the tangent handles in at the bounce points, like so. We'll increase the tangent uh, value here, pull this tangent handle out a bit. Increase the weighting here. Also, go ahead and just make minor adjustments to this keyframe. So as you can see, what I'm doing is actually controlling the shape of my path, which is in turn changing my animation. So now when I hit play, we have a bounce taking place simply because of the animation path. The cool thing about this is I can now adjust this as if it were a 3D editable trajectory. So I can start taking vertices and maybe pull this over here, um, move the next vertex up, about 50% between, and then start editing the tangents to align the two points. Maybe something about like so. So now I have a bounce that is literally changing direction. Using the th this method, you can get great control over your objects without actually having to reach in and manipulate your animation with F curves. That's really going to show everything that uh, I plan to document in this video. I hope you uh, took something out of it. Thanks a lot.